around people up. Well, I'm ready to go. So you guys ready to learn about some pride? Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, so a little bit about who I am. So I'm, I'm uh, Claytron on the Internet. Uh, so if you're looking for me on Twitter or wherever. Uh, and as Joe mentioned, uh, engineer at Tinderbox, and we are hired. I'll reiterate that fact. Um, we, uh, I, and I would consider myself sort of a debugger, debugger a phishing and auto. Um, so I've, I was a Python programmer, uh, former life. Uh, I've only been really programming Ruby for about a year, a little less than a year. Um, so this is, I think this is my first official Ruby talk. Um, so let me know if I'm off base on anything. Just scream at me, like, that's wrong! Um, so we're going to talk about Pry. So Pry is a, a super powerful REPL. Uh, it's kind of meant to be a replacement for IRB, or just an enhanced IRB. Um, they, they built it with uh, uh, flexibility in mind, so you can write plugins for it. Uh, there's a lot of cool plugins out there, and we'll talk about those a little bit later. Um, and it's a, it's a great way to browse code and also uh, debug code. So who in, who in here has used Pry before? So most everybody. And would anyone consider themselves a Pry expert or power user? Nobody. Okay. You almost raised your hand. There's so much to it. It's <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a pretty big topic. Um, all right, so who hasn't used Pry? Anybody? All right, couple people. All right, so this is going to blow your mind. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> uh, so uh, getting started, just it's a gem, so you can just gem install Pry and Pry doc if you want to uh, enhance the uh, show documentation, which we'll show a little bit later. Um, so you can just start up Pry um, from the command line, uh, just like you would IRB. And then you can, uh, like in this case, I'm just putting a string. And you can see uh, the output here. It shows the output and also the return value. Um, so depending on what you're, what you're doing in Pry, you, you'll get different uh, types of uh, output there. Um, and the, the prompt itself uh, is made up of, of several parts. And this is just the default prompt. You can, you can customize all that, and we'll talk about that. Um, so the first item is, is number one. So that's your command history. So as you uh, go through the file, that number will increment, and you can use that. I actually, don't, I'm not going to cover using the history, um, but it is there. Um, and then your prompt name, and then your current context. Um, so we'll see all that stuff uh, here as we go through. So uh, let's see how it works. So first I'm going to see, I, I have Pry installed. Uh, and then I start up Pry. Then um, I'm going to define a string. And then I'm going to use the CD functionality, which changes context uh, into that string. So now I'm in the context of that string. I just use ls to see all the methods. Uh, they're on the string object itself. Um, then I can do things like um, upcase. So I, I'm in the context of that string, so I can actually run that uh, method directly. Uh, I can mutate that string by uh, pinning the bang. Uh, then I can um, I can also like split. You know, I can just do whatever you would do with a, with a normal string. string. Um, and then if we go a bit further, I could so say go into uh, the pry object. So you can just go into a class, a CD into a class. Uh, you can see here this is a much more complicated um, uh, object. So there's a lot more methods and instance variables and everything else. Uh, so now I'm just gonna I'm gonna add a method to the pry object. So I'm just gonna define self dot hello, and it's just gonna put uh, the string hello. And now I'm gonna CD back to uh, my home object. In this case, it's the main object. And then I'm going to do pry to hello, and you can see it prints out hello. So I just added a method to an object uh, in memory. And so you can use ls to grep for a particular uh, um, method. And so in this case, I'm just searching for hello, and I see it's, it shows up now in pry.methods. Um, so now um, I'm going to ls another object, uh, looking for open structure. You can see I'm tab completing. Uh, so now I see the, the OpenStruct object. Uh, I can show the documentation for that, op that uh, particular class um, or object. And uh, so now I can see all the, the documentation. And it's, it's highlighted, the code's highlighted and everything inside of there. Um, and I can also do show source, which will show uh, the actual source of that object or that class. And again, it's all highlighted. It's super nice. Um, and then I can also uh, just do edit. And that's going to open up my whatever is defined as my editor. And I'm going to pop into the OpenStruct class. It takes me directly to that class. And then I can sort of browse around. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, oh, just do it. 
Right, so I just showed you a ton of stuff. Um, uh, so there's, there is built-in help. Uh, so if you're in Pry, you can just type help. And I've, I've pared this down a little bit just to some of the stuff I'm, I'm using. There's a ton of stuff just in the default Pry. Um, so you could, you could get lost in there for a couple hours just reading all the docs of Pry itself. Um, but then you can also get um, specific help on you know, one uh, particular uh, command. Uh, so there's this WTF command, and I love that you can add more uh, uh, question marks and, and exclamation points uh, <laughs> to see more lines. Um, so there's, uh, that's, that's one of the built-in commands. So there's, there's a bunch of commands, and as you add more plugins, uh, they'll show up as new headers, and they'll tell you the version of that plugin and everything. Uh, so it's, it's really nice. Um, so customization. So I'm I, I like to customize things. Um, so anytime I start to use something, I'm like, oh, what what kind of things can I put in my RC file to make this more better? Um, so first thing I would probably do is vim my uh, dot prior C. That's where all the customizations are are contained. Um, one I added uh, that because I'm used to using PDB and, and Python, um, and in PDB you can just hit return to repeat the last command. Um, so this does that. Uh, I had to change it a little bit because um, it would sometimes do continue, quit, continue or quit if that was my last command. And I hit enter a couple times, like in, if I had Rails up and I hit enter just to like see you know, where I'm at. Next time it got into Pry, it would do continue. And I'm like, no. Uh, so, so I just changed, this, this is an example, I think maybe on the Pry website or somewhere, um, Stack Overflow or something. Uh, so I just adapted it to check to see if uh, it's not one of these commands that's going to like take you out of the program. Um, you can you can also create aliases. Uh, so we'll talk about this uh, plugin a little bit later. But uh, I like one-letter aliases for like walking through the code. So you can add your own aliases, and you can see uh, here I actually had to guard against my aliases as well as well in case I use those as the last command. Um, and then you can do other stuff uh, like I, I don't really like the, the pager. So by default, if you if the output is too long for the screen, it's gonna uh, turn on the pager. Um, I, I'm not used to that. I, I want to just print out whatever, and I can I can use my uh, terminal or Tmux or whatever to go back and look look at things. So I just turn that off. Um, and then I, I like they give me an option to change the prompt, so I'm gonna change the prompt name. Uh, so when <laughs> when it pulls up into Pry for me, it says oh no. Uh, so that's that's fun when you're uh, debugging something. Uh, there are uh, so as I mentioned before, there's a, there's a ton of plugins. Um, my my typical setup will have uh, the ones I'm going to mention here. Uh, so you can you can have it do automatic awesome print. So who here has not heard of awesome print? Are you everyone's oh, a couple people. So awesome print is a is a way for um, like if you're in Rails and you print out you say print. Uh, uh, like an active record object, it will it knows how to print that out in a nice way. We can see all the all the attributes and everything. In there. So it's, it's a really cool uh, tool. Uh, so in Pry, you can uh, you could do this in your prior C to make it automatically do an awesome print. Uh, but this guy wrote a plugin to to do it, so you could share it with you know your whole team. That way, everyone gets that functionality, uh, whether they want it or not. Uh, one thing you can do is. Um, so by default, like here, if I define this uh, uh, hash, it's going to print out that hash um, right afterwards, because that's just the default behavior of Pry. Um, with Awesome Print, so when you uh, just like type in an object name or something like that, it may print out just a ton of stuff. And it may be, you may not want all that stuff to be printed out. So you can put a, this is just default uh, Pry, it's nothing to do with the Awesome Print plugin, but it's, uh, you can just put a semicolon at the end, and that'll suppress uh, the output. Uh, so you can just define something and not have it like, print out a bunch of stuff if you're worried about that. Um, there's also a pry bybug. So bybug is, is a way of navigating uh, through the code. Um, so this just integrates it into pry. It basically just adds the next step and continue and a couple other commands uh, so you can sort of navigate things. Uh, another one I use, because uh, I'm used to uh, PDB, again, uh, from Python, is uh, Stack Explorer. So you can actually see the whole call stack. So if you uh, put a pry somewhere, like in Rails or, or Sinatra or somewhere, uh, once you hit that pry, you can see where, where all the callers are uh, above you 
Um, so like you know you'll see like templating machinery and all these other things uh, up to that point. So you can sort of see it print out all that stuff, and you can go up and down. So if if you're you're seeing something weird at that point, you could go up the stack and see what the the caller is doing, what's passing to your function. And just keep going up. Uh, it's super super handy. Uh, one I haven't used but learned about while uh, working on this talk was uh, Pry Clipboard. Um, so you can quickly um, copy the, the whole history of your session or a particular uh, output, um, and you can like uh, you can assign those to, to aliases or whatever. So you can just like pop that in your clipboard and then go take it. So like maybe if you're um, sort of uh, prototyping inside of Pry and you want to take all that stuff and put it into a file and start actually working on it. You can, you can use the Pry clipboard for that. Um, and if you're working with Rails, uh, there's a Pry Rails uh, plugin. So what this does is uh, when you go to start up Rails console, it's going to automatically start you up in Pry instead of IRB. Um, I get angry if I get started up in IRB, uh, so I have this installed. <laughs> um, and then it also gives you some commands to inspect the Rails environment. So there's like a show dash models and show dash routes, um, and you can actually try out routes, and it'll tell you. You can give it a string, and it'll tell you what route it's going to hit. So there's a bunch of cool stuff you can do uh, inside of there. Um, and I'm going really fast. So, sorry, <laughs> almost done. Um, so I mean, the main thing I use it for is is debugging. Um, so I'm usually gonna if I if if there's some part of the code that I don't understand or uh, maybe there's a test that's that's acting funky. I'll put a pry in there, and it can, you can get into that point uh, directly where uh, the code is is running. Uh, so this, they call this runtime invocation. Uh, so if if pry isn't already required, uh, you have to require pry, and then you can do binding dot pry, and so that will uh, basically stop the process at that point with all your, you know, all the application state as it was when it hit that, that uh, pry. So then you can really start digging into uh, everything that, uh, every, every, you know, method calls, all kinds of things, and start debugging things. So here I have an example of, of doing that. So this little library I wrote, um, it's called Augury. Um, so I'm going to go, and this is the, in the CLI method, I'm going to put in a pry and then save that. And then I'm going to run the augury command, so it's a command line application. And then it brings me up into uh, the code right there. Um, so I'm going to step into this uh, that function, so that takes me into the, the right fortune function. Uh, I can go next, so I can sort of like start going through the code, and I can see it's a, it's a bunch of text. I know it's delineated by uh, percent signs, because it generates a fortune file. Um, so there's, there's awesome print doing its uh, magic. Um, then I can also uh, sort of use the uh, semicolon trick to just get the uh, first item and no other output, and so it just prints out what that thing would be, and so I ignore the the, uh, the output, and then I can continue. So typically, if you're done uh, debugging, you just uh, continue, and it'll keep going through the rest of the program uh, and uh, execute the rest of the code. Um, there's a couple other ways to get out of a pry, so. Um, continue is typically if you're, uh, you're you're satisfied with what's going on there and you want to continue execution. You can also exit out of the program. So if if um, you know say the next line is going to like delete your home directory or something, you don't want it to run that. You can actually exit out of the code um, and, and stop the program completely. Um, sometimes that's desired. Uh, most of the time, continue is fine. I mean, I hope there's no uh, R minus R F of your home directory in your code. Uh, so you should be fine. Um, just to make sure the is working correctly. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then uh, that's, I went really fast through that. Um, I'll put these slides up uh, with some links, uh, links to my, my dot files uh, with all the stuff in it. Um, so yeah, uh, any questions? Are there good sources for information? about the process of debugging and about most of the commands that come in other debuggers because most of the debugging that I've learned have been from other people and I have yet to find like a good kind of comprehensive overview of most of the options and kind of just techniques of debugging. Uh, I don't know if you know any off the top of my head. Um, I mean, I, 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 it's harder I find in Pry because you sort of have to put a few plugins together to make it a full debugger. 
So by default, it's just more of it's just a rebel. It's not really meant to be a debugger. Well, I mean, it's meant to be, but it's not by default. Um, so it was, for me, it was a little hard to get into it and figure out, OK, what? why can't I? Like, I put a binding up right and try to like step over yeah, something. Start plugging in. Yeah. Like yeah. So yeah, so I basically made PDB for me in, in uh, uh, Ruby with, with Prime. Um, so resources, I'm not sure. It's most for me. It's it's all been experience. So. Does anybody have good like um, kind of plans for resources or at least plenty resources on debugging techniques and stuff? Yeah. 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 Y
Uh, save that. It's going to save it back to the memory list, and I fix it. Wow. That's that's all standard? Yeah, it's all standard. Yeah. What have I been doing with my life? <laughs> <laughs> so you can do edit on any, uh, any object. Uh, so like before when I was in my uh, augury code, I could just say edit some like augury fortune. It would take me directly to that thing. I could change it, save it, takes me back, and it's already loaded back in the memory with the new thing. Yeah, well, I've probably never done this, but certain values at one time, but it tells you how, like, why is this code now returning the value? I was back to what you're doing wrong. Yeah. 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 Yeah.